marriage, is he? What do you say we get married right away? Oh, Jeff, don't start that again. I told you a thousand times I'll never marry until Angie's married. But Angie better get on to her, Joe. She's not getting any younger. That's just it. She's four years older than I am. If I get married first, people are going to call her an old maid. And nobody will marry her. Yes. And in the meantime, we have to wait and... Hey, watch her with Bertie. I'm sorry, Bertie, but I've decided that I can't marry you. Oh, but why? Uh, why the sudden change? Uh, I mean to say, uh, dashes. You don't come up with specifications. Specifications? Uh, what am I, a horse or, or a silly ass? Well, I wouldn't say that you were silly. But, my dear, you know, you, you can't judge a husband in a bathing suit. No, but you can get a rough idea. Oh. Looks like another flop. Oh, let her alone, dear. She'll find the right man someday. Yeah, we won't live that long. Why did she turn down Jack Peters? Oh, she said he had no romance, no excitement. She wants a man that she'll never be sure of. <laughs> Is that so? Well, what about, what about George Waters? <laughs> he looked like he'd never been kissed. Oh, rot. I tell you one thing. I'm not going to let your sister interfere with our happiness. Oh, Jeff. I mean it. You're going to marry me next week. Nothing's going to stop us. But how can I? I know what I'll do. I'll marry Angie myself. What? Yeah, and then I'll poison her and marry you. Where are you going? Where am I going? To get the poison. Well, I must leave take that train to town, honey. Oh, Fred. You think of nothing but business. The wife likes to have her husband at least one night a week. Hey, you, cut that out. That's my wife. Sorry, thought it was mine. Can you beat that? Honey, when I'm away nights, I hope you will... You hope I never look at another man. Well, you just better not leave me alone so much. Take a little white beast tip. Nita, why do you always start pulling that stuff? You know how I hate it. Oh, you two lovebirds. At oh. it again. Well, Angie, how would you like your husband leaving you every night for business? Are you sure it's business? No, I'm not. Then I'd love it. Oh, if I only had a husband that could make me jealous. Why, I'd send him out nights, just to get a thrill when he came home. Angie, you talk like a fool. How would Fred like it if I started going out nights? Oh, you wouldn't mind, Fred, would you? Not if the man was good looking. Oh, no, I wouldn't mind, because I'd have the extreme pleasure of twisting his neck. <laughs> Bye, honey. Goodbye, Fred. Bye. Oh, Nita, the more I see of men, the more I love my dog. Hello. Hello. Don't wait for me. You go up and have your luncheon. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Are you hurt? Speak. Oh, oh, oh. Help! Help somebody! Get a doctor! Help there! Help! Get a doctor! Get a doctor! I think he's dead! The poor dear. He has such a soulful, sad face. How could you be so careless? Suppose he dies. That's right, that's right. Be as cheerful as possible. Hello, what's this? Carpet tax. Let's see if there's any more. Ah, ah, e easy, easy, easy.
Well, there's a pretty bad scalp wound, but no apparent fracture. Probably some brain concussion. Well, he must have perfect rest and quiet. I advise he have a nurse. Oh, won't I do, Doctor? I'll give him the best possible care. Mm, the poor thing. Well, uh, all right, Miss Emery, if you want to. I'll go down and write out some instructions for you. I wonder who he is. He looks like one who has loved and suffered. Oh! Oh, oh, Mrs. Cumming, too. Oh, there was an accident, my poor man. And you're in my home. Don't worry. Everything will be all right. I'm going to take care of you. I won't be gone long. I'm just going down to see what the doctor tells me to do for you. Come on, Jenny, I may need you. Uh, Jeff, dear, now, there's a dear. You stay here and take care of him, won't you? You watch over him carefully. Come on, Jenny, we'll see what the doctor has to say. Hurry up. I'm awful sorry, old man. I'm the fellow who hit you. But you weren't looking where you were going. Oh, I was looking at her. Oh, I, I don't blame you. And, uh, what do you think of her now that you've met her? Oh, she's beautiful. Hmm. Say, uh, what's your name? Reginald Irving. What business are you in? I'm a sign tagger. Of what? Sign tagger. I go around putting signs on telegraph posts and fences and things. Oh, <laughs> I see. In the advertising business, huh? Yeah. Are you uh, married? Oh, no. Have you ever had anything to do with women? Oh, I used to sell vacuum cleaners. Oh, no, no. I mean, have you ever had a love affair with a woman? Oh, gosh, no. Well, you're going to have. Oh, I can't. I don't get paid until Saturday. That's why this one costs you anything. You like Miss Embry, don't you? Is that the uh, lady that was just here? Mm-hmm. Oh, she's marvelous. How would you like to know her real well? I might fix it so that she could be the mother of your children. Continually off. I think the scalp wounds show up very well in the Thank you, Doctor. Goodbye, baby. Goodbye, I'll Doctor. Take good care of the patient. Goodbye. Well, I found out who our patient is. Really? <laughs> You'd never guess. Oh, darling, don't be so mysterious. Reggie Irving. Reggie Irving? Uh huh. The Reggie Irving. Well, I don't know him. What? You don't know Reggie Irving, the great outdoors man? Does he run with our set? Oh, no, no, hardly. No. He's better known in London and Paris. Oh, I'm surprised you never heard of the name. I never heard of him either. Oh, listen. He's figured in so many divorce cases that all the lawyers in France wept when he left. Not really. <laughs> Surely. Not. Mm -hmm. Reggie Irving. The little devil. And he has such a soulful, innocent look in his eyes. Innocent? <laughs> oh, that's just the way he works. Why, the very clothes he had on today were a disguise. He's probably on his way to a rendezvous at the home of one of your neighbors. I wonder who it can be. Yes. Uh, why, he's the worst boudoir snake in captivity. Uh, pardon me. What are you going to do? What am I going to do? Phone for an ambulance. Not on your life. The doctor says he mustn't be moved. But he can't stay here. What would people say? Oh, don't be absurd. I can manage him perfectly. Well, how about Ginny? She'd probably fall for him, too. And I couldn't stand that. I'll take care of Ginny. All right. Have it your own way. But remember, I warned you. Warned me? <laughs> You've intrigued me. Come in. A lady to see Mr. Herbie. Tell 
her that he can't see anyone. Oh, I'm sure he'll see me. Reggie! My poor darling Reggie! To think of you lying here like this. Heaven! What's this? Porridge! Here, take this away. He detests porridge. Really, I must Don't say... Don't you suppose I know what he likes for breakfast? Reggie! Reggie! Don't you know me? It's your little Gwenny! Your little Gwenny! Son, it's true. What they told me downstairs. He's lost his memory. Oh, Reggie! Reggie! Really, my really, poor... really, I must ask you to leave. You're disturbing him. All right, nurse. When you get on your feet again, sweetheart, remember, my arms will be waiting. Two ladies to see Mr. Hervey. Reggie, Reggie, oh, darling. Reggie, my darling. Hey, oh, I'm over to see Tony Cypher. Take your hands off of him, listen, baby. How do you lose my slapper? Will you please take your hands off of him, Reggie, darling? Oh, I didn't know that you were sick, and I didn't know it was you, half so bad. Out. Will you please take your hands Poor off of him, listen, Reggie, darling? Oh, well, the, did you put it over? No, my shearer couldn't have done any better. <laughs> Good girl. Here's 50 extra. to the man who stops him. Never mind that quit. Here, I, I want him alive. Come along, give him to me. Give him to me. Oh, have you killed him? No, I think he's all right. All right, I'll pick up with you later. Well, I'll see you later. Shh. He must have absolute rest and quiet, Marie. No one must enter or disturb him in any way. Yes, please. Hey, darling, I've got some good news for you. Really? Yes, I think Angie's just mad about that little shrimp upstairs. Is that so? Yes. Well, she you know... Let... She, won't... <laughs> yes. she, won't... she won't let anybody come near the room. No, I didn't think she would. Oh, she's going to have a devil of a time with that little brute. Uh, hello. Well... Fix the 
curtain. Oh. Hey, 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 what did I tell you? Huh? Don't do that. I want him alive. I'll you know, know. Get him Get him well, come on, put him over here. Make yourself it. Happy. That's all right. Now beat it, Peter. You make your fifty. I'll give it to you at the end of the week. All right. Come on, boys. Don't forget to put those glasses away, Bridget, and be very careful of them. Hello, Horace. How are you? Uh, quite nicely, thank you, sir. <laughs> I'm glad to see you. Yes, sir. Can I do anything for you, sir? No, nothing, thank you. Nice pantry you have, Horace. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Hello, Horace. Glad to see you. Very glad to see you. Glad you're still with us. I feel fine. Hope you feel the same. Bring it here. This is the way to see you. <laughs> Goodbye, Horace. Azania sat on the terrace of the Hotel de Paris, gazing out over the Asia. I was afraid those screams might have wakened him. No, it's quite all right. I'm just reading him to sleep. <laughs> An attentive waiter saw her, went to her, and hovered over her. Is there anything that Madame desires? Yes. Oh, he's perspiring <laughs> dreadfully. Is he? Well, that's splendid, yes. The fever has probably broken up. Being a waiter, he waited. But <laughs> being... <laughs> being an intelligent waiter... He... <laughs> Just a little uh, irritation somewhere. Being an intelligent waiter, he didn't wait very long. And also be... No, <laughs> he didn't do it, did he? So, she sat off the terrace. Lovely gown, Leila. Thank you'll be down soon. Yes, I want to see you, Angie. Have you seen this issue of the uh, social gossip? No. Don't tell me there's more about her and Reggie Irving. Of course, we knew there'd be lots of broken hearts when Reggie Irving's engagement to Angelica Embry was announced. But we hardly expected that the prospective bridegroom's various explanations would necessitate a midnight supper last Monday in a private room at the Seaside Hotel with a certain lovely blonde divorcee of Long Island. Oh, Leela, that's awful! And a week before the wedding. Angie already thinks that I have been making uh, eyes and side glances at that impossible little shrimp of hers. And this atrocious paper accuses me of being his companion. And you weren't there at all, were you, darling? Thank goodness I have a perfect alibi. Oh, Jeff! Yes. Well, that's all right, darling. I'll go and see Reggie and demand an explanation. You do that, dear. Maybe it isn't true. I hope so, for Angie's sake. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Well, and how's everything? Oh, it's terrible. Terrible? What's happened? She's worth eight million dollars. Oh, and what's so terrible about that? Oh, I could never marry a woman for her money. Oh. Say, what's the matter with you? You're managing her estate, and in another week she'll be your wife. And I ought to tell her that I'm not the kind of man she thinks I am. Say, you do that, and I'll... <laughs> There you are, darling. Really, darling, you mustn't work so hard. We're having tea on the terrace. You must come out. Wait a minute, Angelica. I want to talk to you. Why, of course, dear. What is it? I've got something I want to say to you. Alone. Oh, I know what it is, dear. You want to tell me how much you love me, and how happy you are. 
But, but suppose I told you that I'm not the man you think I am. And uh, that I don't know these other women. I've never been out with them at all. <laughs> you naughty, naughty boy. As if I'd believe it. No, darling. It's not your past I'm worried about. It's your future and your present. Bye-bye, <laughs> dear. No use. She won't believe me. Ah, oh, Sap. Sap! Do you want to spoil everything? Think of all I've done for you. Think of what this means to me. You're not going to weaken until Jilly and I are married. And then, if you're determined to go ahead and wreck two lives, one of them human, go as far as you like. But until then, you'll stick. You'll stick! And as for that insignificant little nickapoop that you're so crazy about, I wouldn't give him a thought. Indeed. Well, many very attractive women have, my dear. And besides, he is not an nincompoop. Oh, Angie, my dear, if he were ever left alone in a dark room with a beautiful woman, he'd drop dead. Why, here's Freddy! <laughs> Hello, Fred. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad to see you. I didn't know I was here. I telephoned over. How are you, Angie? Hello, oh, Jimmy. Oh, You're going to stay to tea, of course, Fred. No, thanks. I can't stop. Oh, oh Fred. I'm sorry, Nita. I've got to go out of town at once. I really dropped in to say goodbye. Oh, Fred, take me with you. I can't, dear. This is... This is business. Business again. Oh, perhaps you two would like to say your tender goodbyes in private. Come on, Jenny. I told you it was business, dear. Business. Mr. Irving, did you have this scandalous article put in here? No. Did you explain to Angie the story isn't true? There's no use explaining. She insists on believing that I'm bad. And I'm not, honest I'm not. Well, I should think she'd be able to take one look at you and realize that if you were left alone in the room with a woman, why... We'd both be safe. Why? Right? I was in a house one time all alone with the most beautiful French maid. And she tried to kiss me. She was baking a pie. And what did you do? I ate the pie. Oh, this is perfectly dreadful. I'll wager everybody thinks I was there and that you held me in your arms and kissed me. Well, I, I wouldn't know how. Why, you never get such thoughts, do you? Oh, I get the thoughts, but I'm scared to carry them out. Oh, Nina. Well, I apologize for even thinking that story was true. Why, you have too much sense to even be seen with this poor little nitwit. Oh, you heard. Yes, and I'm happy I did. Say, hey, Angie, what's happened? Oh, nothing's happened. That's just it. Why, nothing's ever happened to Reggie. Why, why, why he's not even a man. Oh, I am, too. Even Professor Einstein couldn't make me believe that. Now, see what you've done. You sap. Oh, it's all I can do to keep my hands off you. I didn't know she was listening. Oh, you idiot. You've gummed up the whole works. Now we've got to do something at once, or else it's all off. I wish it was. I'm tired of being a villain. Say, hey, I've got it. I've got it. You're going to be caught with the goods. I'm going to be a crook? A crook, no. You're going to have an affair with a woman tonight. Oh, I'm a little nervous. Can't you make it tomorrow night? No, tonight. What woman? Oh, never mind. Any woman. I'll attend to that. Now, listen. You will go to the Seaside Hotel. You may have my rooms there. You will register as Mr. and Mrs. John Smith, and Angelica will catch you. You, you think that'll help me with Angelica? Help you? Huh. Why, it'll marry you to her. Oh, supposing Angelica is delayed. No, she won't be delayed. I'll attend to that. Well, what'll I do with this woman while I'm waiting? Gee, I'm not much at talking. Oh, well, I'll tell you. Here, here, I'll draw a diagram for you. Now, come along. Write this down. Now, first of all, 
you register as Mr. and Mrs. John Smith. Mr. and Mrs. John Smith. Right. Right. Now, when you first get to your room, order some uh, champagne and broiled lobster. Champ. Can't you make it beer? Beer, certainly not. Champagne. T H A M P A. Oh, well, uh, make it wine. W I N E. Well, what'll I call her? Oh, call her kid, sweetheart, baby. Kid, sweetheart, baby. Uh huh. And then when you're helping her to take off her. Uh... Take off her what? Rap. R A P. No, rap. W R A P. Wap? Wap. What? Make it coat. K O T E. Then slip your arm around her. Give her a little kiss. Kiss. Then pull her down onto your knee. Must I do that? Of course you must. Well, I'll put it down. After the knee, what happens? You know, haven't you any imagination? Yeah, but I'm afraid to depend on it. Oh, well, you've got enough there anyhow. Now, come along. Run out to your room and pack your bags. I'll attend to everything else. Go ahead. Have a good time. I'll have a good time if it kills me. I'll make it simple. Whatever you do, don't weaken. As quick as you can. Go ahead, boy. Hurry up! Jefferson Hayward in. I'll see, madam. Uh, who shall I say is calling? Well, I have an appointment. Uh, what is the name, please? He expects me. Uh, what is the name, please? Say, what if I don't want to tell you? Well, then I shan't know who to say is here, madam. Well, good. Go tell him I'm here. Yes, but... name after the article you made me put in my column. I'm so glad you came. I rushed the moment I got your note. Come along, sit down. Goodness. Well, what is it? You've got me all goose pimples. Polly, you know how anxious I am to get married. Well, not half as anxious as I am, and look how calm I act. Yeah, but I want to get married next week, and you're the one that's going to do it for me. Do it for you, Great Scott. When a man gets married, that's one thing he must do for himself. Oh, don't you understand? Yeah, tell me something. I'll understand it. All right. I want you to meet this Reggie Irving. You mean the man that I've been scandalizing in my column? Mm-hmm. I want you to meet him alone. No, it's all right. It's all right. This is just a trick. Yeah, well, you don't want me. You want a magician. No, but he's quite harmless. Why, if he were to find himself in a room alone with a woman, he'd probably faint. Yeah. Well, sometimes they come to life. <laughs> I'll be seeing you. Oh, <laughs> Great Scott, don't scare me. Now listen, I only want you to have supper with him, will you? Well, will he give me a good supper? Oh, sure. In my room is at the Seaside Hotel. And then Miss Embry, his fiancée, will catch you there. That's all. That's enough. The last time I was caught by a fiancée, she had more hair in her hand than I had in my head. I'm not worrying about your hair. Well, I am. It's darn hard to match. Oh. Now, Jeff, you act so. Why, you, you ought to see a doctor. Goodbye. Now, come here. Listen, Polly, we've always been good friends, haven't we? Yes, but you're scaring the friendship out of me. Now, come along, uh, and let's get organized. I told you over the telephone what a terrible fix I was in, didn't I? Now then, if we can only get Angelica to find her Reggie with another woman... Oh, I see. Looks don't mean anything. Anyone will do. Oh, so you picked me. Thanks. Oh, no, <laughs> you're such a great scout. Yes, I'm Buffalo Bill. Now, listen. You will register as Mr. and Mrs. John Smith. Mr. and Mrs. John Smith? <laughs> now I'm Pocahontas. <laughs> no, that's just to get in. You're supposed to be Reggie's wife, Mrs. John Smith, uh, pro tem. Oh, I'd love to be a wife pro tem. You can have all the fun and none of the housework. You'd better see another architect. Oh, maybe you're right. I'd better find someone who can put a little pep into a man. 
Someone with enough it to teach a man how to act with a woman. Oh, yeah? What is the address of this seaside hotel? Nita, won't you listen to reason? If you don't take me, you'll be sorry. I've told you I can't. Then go. And I don't care if you never come back. Nita, you don't mean that. Oh, yes, I do. Every word of it. Leave me alone. Oh, very well. I'll wire you when I arrive. Make my excuses to Miss Embry. You make them yourself. Bye, dear. Oh, Fred. Now, Seaside Hotel, 7 o'clock, Coach Reggie and Supper. Gee, I love Supper. I hope they have meat. So long, Jeff. I'll see you Thursday. Bye-bye, Polly. I know what I'll do. I'll raise the devil. I'm going out with the worst man I know to a terrible place. And I'm going to let Freddie know about it. Then he'll have to come back. Well, after all, dear, it's your own affair. But don't do anything foolish. Alimony may be easy money but it don't make up for a lot of lonesome nights. Hurry up! Maybe if Angelica was late, I could practice putting. No, oh, go ahead, beat it, beat it. Go by the garden. Go ahead, everything's all set. Rather important business, so I, I'll run along. I, I'll call you later. Goodbye, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Goodbye, darling. Oh, there you are. Where's that little wretch, Reggie? I want to send him packing out of my life. Now, Andy, wait a minute. I'm done with him. He's made me a laughing stock. Oh, there he is. Really? <laughs> Getting into a car. Alone? No. There's a woman in it. A woman? The little hussy. Oh, Reggie, how oh, I've wronged you. I beg your pardon. Where's Nita? Her car's starting. They're going away together. Oh, Reggie, how oh, I've misjudged you. What is it? What's the matter? The matter? Nothing's the matter. Everything's perfect. My Reggie has just eloped with your Nita. What? I'll murder him.
Seaside Hotel. What? The Seaside. The hotel down here. I'm Mr. John Smith and wife. Oh. Would you like uh, two rooms? Oh, no. I'll only be here one night. Do you prefer single or twin beds? Which is best? How do you generally sleep? On my back. On your... Then I'll uh, give you a double bed. Uh, I'm Mr. Hayward's Mr. John Smith and wife. Oh, you're that Mr. and Mrs. John Smith. Well, why didn't you say so before, sir? Now, uh, if you uh, kindly uh, register, uh, we'll take care of you immediately. Mr. Smith. So right here, Mr. Smith, we'll take care of you immediately. Maybe I better sign it again. Uh, yes, I think you better. Uh, uh, just. It must be raining out, isn't it? Uh, boy, uh, will you take care of these people, please? Where will I take them? To the laundry? No, uh, room uh, 636. Anything else, sir? No, thanks. No supper? Nothing to eat? Oh, yeah. Bring wine. <laughs> Not so loud. What's the matter? Why, well, I'll get ten years if I'm caught selling that stuff. Well, if you don't get caught, how much will it cost? Fifteen dollars a quart. Bring champagne. That's twenty dollars a quart. Bring wine. Should have been beer, I told him. Hey, what are you going to eat? Lobster. Yeah? The lady, too? Yes. 
That's three lobsters. No. One for me and the lady, too. The lady, too. That's three lobsters. I guess you'll have to eat two lobsters. Sure, you can spare this. Say, uh, do you favor your father or your mother? Oh, my mother. Yeah? My father left town the day before I was born. Probably knew what was coming. care for it either. Already I'm so wet. Well, maybe you better take that coat off. <gasps> Reggie. I wish I had something dry to put on. Maybe there's something in the grip. Just playing with the wife. I bet you two have a lot of fun together. Here's your wine and your lobster. That lobster's only got one big claw. They lose one sometimes in a fight, you know. Well, why didn't you bring me the winner? Uh, anything else, sir? Yeah. Uh, I want you to take the missus Close out and have them dry. Okay. Don't you dare come in. Uh, give me your clothes so I can send them down to have them dried. I'll give you the clothes, but don't you dare come in. She doesn't want me to come in. I noticed that. How about you? You better change, too. Don't you dare come out here. Still playing, huh? Come on out.
kiss. Oh, Reddy, you know, you said you wouldn't really do that. It's in the book. The book? Hello, kid, sweetheart, baby. Reddy, you shouldn't say such things. Something here about your knee. My knee? Well, maybe it's my knee. Oh, oh, I know what it is. You stand up. Oh, Reggie, you mustn't. Oh, it's all right. It's in the book. Oh, Reggie, you mustn't. Oh, no, you, you have to because she's liable to be here now any minute. Oh, Reggie, let Come me go. Come here, now, darn it. aren't you? Yes, ma'am. This is going to be easy. Now, come here now. Don't be scared. I'm not going to kidnap you or give you the needle. You're just as safe with me as you would be in jail. Jeff Haywood said. Jeff Haywood? Yes. Jeff Haywood? Mm-hmm. He sends you here? Yes. Well, what about... What about what? Well, nothing. You know, when Jeff warned me about you, I didn't believe that it could be true. But he was right. He was right. Now, he's explained everything to me, and I'm going to coach you. Coach me? Yes. We're going to have a little rehearsal. Rehearsal? A little practice. Practice. Oh. Do you know what we're here for? To do something to deceive Angelica? Huh? Huh? Oh, what you're supposed to do now is to make love to me. Oh, where do I begin? Up in Minnie's room. First you seize me. Oh, one arm around my neck. Come see, come stop. Well, oh, come and get this. Are you anchored? I am here for a quiet evening. You know, you're dead and you won't lay down. I'm not here to give you dancing lessons. Come on. Oh, try that now. Your rough work is funny. I didn't mean to hurt you. Oh. Clinch, will you clinch? Get a half, Nelson. <laughs> What's the matter with this thing? Hasn't it ever been used? Now say something like this. Darling, I love you madly. I cannot live without you. You must never leave me. Now you do that. Darling, I love you madly. I cannot live without you. You must never leave me. You have all the passion of an infuriated clam. Get out there! What do you think you're doing? This is a love scene. Oh, say it as if you really meant it. Say, darling, I love you madly. I cannot live without you. You must never leave me. I'll get you a piece of meat. Send up the hip of a horse. Oh, come on, now you know what to say. Say it. Come on, say it. Oh, my darling, I love you madly. 
I cannot live without you. You never, must never leave me. He's moved in on me. Say, don't go to sleep here. This is not old home week, you know. Now you must kiss me. Huh? Not huh. Kiss me. your maiden aunt. I'm supposed to be the party of the second part in a regular orgy. In a regular orgy. In a kiss. Let me show you a kiss. Once more, straight through this time, and I'll be flirting with you. <laughs> you were meant for me. Kiss me. Kiss me. Oh, my darling. I love you madly. You must never leave me. I cannot live without you. I beg your pardon. Me. Mama, do you want to play? good, too. But, no, no, Nita, th th that's the wrong girl. Didn't you fish it with her? No, 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 that was another girl, a friend of mine. Oh, that other woman. Oh, yes, yeah, she told me what to do. I love you madly. I cannot live without you. You must never leave me. Hey, well, uh, never mind that. Tell me, where is Polly? Polly? Yeah, Polly. Polly, yep. Mrs. John Smith. Mrs. John Smith? The, the woman I sent here for you. Oh, 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 she went down the hall to another room to change her clothes. Right, I'll go get her. And listen, get Nita out of here. Her husband's found out all about it. He's out to get her and you. You think he'll be mad? Mad? Ha, he'll kill you. And listen, work fast. Angelica's on her way. She'll be here any moment. Oh, Nita, you got you to come out. 
everything, everything's, everything's been changed. A Mormon. I was right about you, Leela, all the time. What have you done with Nita? Nita? Yes, Nita. Where is she? Oh, Nita came with me, but she didn't know how to play the game, and Leela volunteered. Why, you little shrimp. If you'll only listen to me, I came here to save Nita from this, this monster. And the only way you could save Nita was to take Nita's place on Reggie's lap. Oh, don't be a fool, Angie. I didn't know you had company. Reggie. How could you, Reggie? Oh, you promised me cross your heart that you were going to cut out all these society dolls. Why did you lie to me, darling? Why did you lie to me? Why, why, why? What is Reggie to you? Nothing much. We were to be married next week. Oh, I'm darling, sorry. how could you? You can't do this to me. Don't you realize that this isn't what you do, it's what you're saying. It's absolutely breaking my heart. You can't, Reggie, go on like this. Don't you realize how much... I have known her, You Reggie. really know that I... You can't do it for me. Do it for me. Don't you know? I mean, really, we can't. I'm only a poor working girl, and you've deceived me. You said that I was the only one, your only little tootle. So, this is tootle. Where are you going? Get away from me. Where is Nita? Where's Nita, I say? She, she's not here. Where's my wife? Answer me. I can't keep track of everybody's wife. She's not here. She's not here, huh? No, no. No. Well, it's a good thing for you she's not here. What will I do with Mrs. Smith's clothes, Mr. Smith? 
I tell you, some blood through that in here. Uh. Bring him in. Right, get, get him in that room, quick. Come on, get him. Come on. Come on, get in that room. Don't let him touch anything. Where's the body? What body? 
anybody. There isn't anybody here but me. Don't kid me. There was a woman shot in this room. What'd you do with her? Oh, her? I never saw her before in my life. Kid me? Oh, they got me! I tell you, they got me! Somebody get them off me! I tell you, they got me! They got me! Who are you? I'm the body. What's the matter with you? You speak as if it was all my fault. Come on now, hurry. I'm tired of this whole thing. I came here for a quiet little supper, and what do I get? A shot in the pajamas. But... Don't talk so much. I've told you how to treat a woman. Now go in there and do it. Go on in there and do it. I wouldn't marry that Reggie Irving if he was the last man on earth. Hey, now listen. I love you madly. You must never leave me. I cannot live without you. 